Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk about another technique、uh, which is very commonly used、uh, when you're solving interview questions.、Uh, it's two pointers technique or two pointer technique,、uh, whichever you prefer.、Uh, let's take a look at an example question and talk about it. Here is our question. Given a sorted array A, sorted in ascending order, having n integers, find if there exists any pair of elements such that their sum is equal to x.、Uh, it sounds confusing, but it's actually pretty simple.、Uh, all it wants、uh, us to do is just find. Two elements within our array, but not necessarily、uh, in a sequential、uh, side by side manner. But they can be, you know, one of them can be here, the other one can be here, like this. But requirement is two of the elements、uh, should add up to k. In this case. In this example, it's ten. So you see, there are six and four. So eight and two. There are different possibilities, like seven and three. So at the first、uh, phase, I would like to solve it just like true or false. This is basically what the question is all about. Uh, but if we have time,、uh, I also want to talk about a little more difficult、uh, versions of the same question. All right. So, what would be the easiest, the naive solution or brute force algorithm to solve this kind of problem? Let's check out from geeksforgeeks.org again, and you see the naive solution could be something like this. Basically, you use two for loops, you know, nested loops, which skyrockets the time complexity of your algorithm. And as you see, it's big O of n square.、Uh, again, if you solve this problem in your interview using this algorithm,、uh, your interview will, your interviewer is not going to be impressed. So. He or she is going to ask you to、uh, do the same problem in a more efficient way. So here, where two pointer technique comes in, let's give it a try. We have our function here, find pairs, and it accepts two arguments, r and k. Let's call it array. Array and k. So, what is two pointer or two pointers technique? It's something like this. Imagine your pointer, like this caret symbol.、Uh, you know what I'm saying, right? The pointer means when you have a loop, an iteration. Uh, basically, you define a variable, a local variable. You remember, right? Like this, let i, for example. You use this i value as a、uh, pointer. So think it like this way. If we have just one pointer, we can just do things like this to the next item. Next item, next item, next item. But if we have two pointers, we can move them separately, right? And we can also make calculations depending on different positions of different、uh, pointers. So of course there are maybe thousands of different Implementations of multiple pointers in algorithms, but、uh, basically a simple scenario is starting from 
the beginning of the array with one pointer and another pointer from the end of the array. And as our iteration goes on, we change positions of our pointers like this. For example, th this one is you now the start pointer. Now we move it. And we can also move this one to here and we can compare or make calculations about these. So the basic idea is this. So how do we solve this problem using two pointer technique? Uh, there is an important constraint here. The array is sorted. Sorted in ascending order. That means the first, the very first element of the array is the minimum element and the last element is the maximum value within our element array actually. So we, we are going to use this constraint and also two pointers and we're going to be able to solve this problem in big O of n time complexity. Okay, first we're going to create our pointers and I'm going to call start for this one and I'm going to call end for the other one. Hmm. So the first one is going to start from zero index and the next one, the end, is going to be yes going to be the last index in this case here all right it's array. now we are creating our loop it's going to be a while loop what do we want to do I mean how are we going to end this loop you know this is now like this it's an infinite loop and if we don't uh, set up our base condition here, it's going to, uh, you know, keep looping forever, but we don't want it. And this is going to be start less than end. I'm going to tell about this very soon. Uh, let's now um have a look what's going on here initially our start pointer is at the beginning of array and the end pointer is at the end of the array now we want to sum two values and we want to compare it to our k value right this is what the question is asking from us it says um, find if there are any pair of elements such that their sum is equal to x okay so let's just type it if array start plus array end is equal to k then we're done right because it wants us to give the true output if there are any pair of elements so requirement is relatively easy so we're going to return true if this comparison is fulfilled but now what if we just run this code what's gonna happen it's going to run forever right let's give it a try and see oops of course we need to save file all right what's going on why you are true the start is zero and end is greater than that okay 
Ah, okay, of course. The the reason it's not looping infinitely is, you know, it fulfills because there are elements within our array which gives eleven. But if we let's say do it like ninety, see, it's gonna it's gonna keep going forever. Okay. So now we have to find the necessary, the required conditions to change our start and end pointers positions. So we're gonna say else if array start plus array end is less than k, what are we going to do? Okay, let's try, let's say, 15. Okay, our k, our constant is 15. And now we are running our program. So at the first iteration, the start is 0 and end is 7, I guess. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, 0. And seven. So it's going to try two summing up two and nine. So this is going to be eleven, right? So our k is fifteen. So this is false. It's not going to come here. And then else if array start plus array end less than k. Is that correct? Yeah, it is correct because 9 plus 2 is equal to 11. Now we are here. Now, question is what are we going to do right now? Now, we, we know that this array is sorted, right? And if the sum of two elements that we picked up from the very beginning and the end of the array is less than the required uh, number what can we do we can simply change this position of the first start pointer to the next one right we are still keeping the second one in its place but we're going to increase the position the increment the position of our first pointer start plus plus and now if we don't have any other conditions here what's going to happen the loop is going to start from here with the new values so start is going to be 1 of course index 1 and its value is going to be 3. 9 plus 3 is going to be 12. 12 is still less than 15, right? So we're going to increment, start again. And it's going to again come here. So now our start is going to be here. Its value is going to be 2. And 9 plus 4, 13. And again here, this part is going to be true. And again, we are going to increment start. Let's do it again. 14. And... Hey! You see? 9 plus 6 now what's gonna happen this part is going to uh, be true so it's going to simply return true is that right let's give it a try yeah it does but there is something missing here um, in this case we are not 
uh, changing and we are not covering uh, things which is going to happen when we update this pointer. We are not actually updating position of our end pointer, our second pointer. But in some conditions, it's going to be necessary. I mean, an array can be still in order, it could be still sorted, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be six here, right? This is still sorted. And what's going to happen right now? Do you want to try? Let's try. Take this to initial position. And I'm running the program again. You see? Again, infinite loop. Why? Because, think about the start pointer, we are moving it and it's coming here. And start is always less than end value and it's always executing this block. So we are not returning anything. We are not returning from our while loop. So the case is in here, what happens when the first pointer comes to seven, nine plus seven, it's 16, right? So it's going to be bigger than our K value and we are not covering it here. So let's cover it. So we can simply say else, right? Because we are covering equality and less than, and the, the only other option is greater than. And now here we want to increment or decrement. What do you think? Of course, we can't increment because it's already the end of the array. We have to decrement this because it's going to go this way, like this. Now what's going to happen? Our start value is going to, our start pointer is going to come here. And then because of nine plus seven is 16, which is greater than our K, this end pointer is going to come here and still we will be able to find our result. See, true. Let's try with another K value again. Uh, let's say, hmm, 30. What's going to happen? We cannot have a pair of elements from this array which will add up to 30, right? It's not possible because the highest one would be 17 because it's sorted. We know it. So when we execute our function, it's going to be 0, 7, and then 9, 2, 11, no, what's going to happen? It's less than, so start is going to be incremented. So it's going to come here. 9 plus 3, 12, no. Same thing, start pointer increments. And we come here, 14, still. Sixteen still nine plus eight seventeen is still less than what thirty. So still we are going to increment start value and now start value will be equal to 
nine value. Uh, I mean our end position. So what's going to happen? Start index is no more less than our end index. So we are going to just return from our while loop and here we need to give a return value to our function of course and when we run this we're going to receive false okay this scenario is um, relatively easy what if our interviewer ask us to um, give the indexes of our pairs what do you think it's still easy isn't it because you know we're looking for a specific sum and its equality to a constant so when we find the exact match we can simply return start and end values here okay let's change the k yeah you see hmm there's something interesting here let's reverse our array to our initial position and think about 11 okay how many pairs can we find in this array which will sum up to 11? 9 plus 2, 11. 8 plus 3, 11. 7 plus 4, 11. And 6 plus 5, 11. So what do you think? What will our function is going to return when I run this function what which indexes are we going to see of course the first one and the last one why because we are instantly returning from our function uh, when we find the exact match let's say our interviewer trying to push us and he or she wants us to um, count number of pairs which add up to k value. How would we do that? Hmm? In this example, we can count it's 9 plus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? There are four pairs which sum up to 11. How we can return this value? Maybe, I mean, maybe better we can, or she or he can ask us to return all the indexes. Yeah, we can do it, right? Occurrences. I'm going to create an array and now I'm going to push start and end pointers my indexes to occurrences and I'm going to return occurrences array now what do you think what's gonna happen hmm? let's see it's an infinite loop. It is an infinite loop. Why? Can you see the problem? Here we are adding the start and index values as an array to our result array, but we are not doing anything else. We are not changing and updating our pointers positions. So we have to do that. In this case, if we, are, we were able to find a match we want to change both positions positions of both start and end like this 
So we simply do that. Start plus plus and minus minus. And let's see. Yeah, there it is. Zero seven one six two five three four. Four occurrences with their indexes. Yeah, that's it for now. Uh, by the way, on lead code, there's an article about two pointer technique, and there are classic problems that you can use using this technique. Uh, with small adjustments to using this technique, really, uh, there are maybe hundreds of different questions that you can easily solve when you know about this technique. So I encourage you to practice and I will do the same. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.